Hello YouTube. Today we're going to be talking about the intermediate stage and everything you need to know to escape it with your gains intact. And I use the term escape on purpose because many people regard this stage as a form of trap, as the period during a lifter's journey in which you run the highest risk of being stuck. And I don't disagree with that because many people get their souls claimed by the intermediate stage because it's a highly discouraging moment in your lifting journey. However, it is not correct to say that most people fail at that point. Actually, most people quit when they're novices. Roughly 80 to 90% of lifters can't even get through their novice stage. And so if you clicked on this video as an intermediate who feels down on themselves, I first and foremost want to congratulate you. You have managed to pass the first filter. You have survived the novice stage. And that, I believe, is case for rejoicement. But you are of course not done yet. In reality, your journey has only started. Now things are starting to get interesting. Now things are starting to get difficult. If you are not in this case, however, and you're still a novice, I made a video about how to survive the novice stage. It is in the description. But for those of you who are here for the information, you are in luck because you are going to get a lot of it today. Now, why do most people quit just shy of becoming intermediates? Well, it's for what I just told you. It's because now things are becoming tough. When you're a noob and you have noobie gains, Anything you do in the gym works. Even if your diet, training recovery isn't on point, you will gain muscle. There's no way around that. But with the intermediate stage also begins what we call diminished returns, meaning that the amount of effort you put in does not equal the amount of things you're going to get back. Suddenly, you do a lot of work and you don't see much result. And since the average person does not like hard things, and only wants instantaneous gratification, most people quit. You, thankfully, are not most people. You are tougher than that, and you want to crush the intermediate stage, and that is very respectable. Now, understand one thing. You, by making this decision, are on your path, on your way to an exceptional physique, because the only way to get to that exceptional physique is to get through that stage. But before getting into that, let's quickly define the intermediate stage because the term intermediate can mean many things. For example, I, personally, in terms of strength, I'm still an intermediate in many aspects. I'm actually a novice in certain aspects, which is why I do not like using strength standards to define these stages because to me, it depends too much on leverages and on your gifts and particularities. Instead, for the sake of training discussion and methodology, I define the intermediate stage as follows. The intermediate stage is the point in your journey when linear progression and adding weight every single session stops working, which is also why I personally define someone as gifted for bodybuilding or lifting in general if they can stay a novice for a few years. I've actually met a guy who was like this who was following basic linear progression and who managed to get extremely big and extremely strong. That guy, by just adding five pounds on the bar every single week, got to a 365 bench, a 600 pound squat, I believe, and he refused to deadlift. That is what I call a freak. Most people are not like this. Most people at some point will realize that this simplistic method stops working. That is when you enter the intermediate stage. And this is the point where you have to start putting in place advanced strategies to keep progressing. And I will be sharing these strategies with you, do not worry. But before we do that, we have to start with the mindset. Because if you get and you take anything from this video, it must be this. If your mindset is not right, you will never be able to exit the intermediate stage. So let's get into that. As a novice, it was simple. Your goal in the gym was simply to avoid doing anything stupid because anything that you did in the gym worked. So in reality, anyone can graduate from the novice stage, which is also why I believe that this 80 to 90% of people will lose during the novice stage are people who couldn't be saved regardless 
because they don't have what it takes. If you're so bad that you can't even graduate that easy entry level stage, there was no shot of you ever being able to become advanced and having a good physique. So as we say in French, c'est pas une grande perte. It's not a big loss. But for the rest, for the people who made it, there are certain things you're going to have to put in your head. First and foremost, the fact that your entitlement towards gains is going to be your biggest downfall. As an intermediate, you could be trading religiously, do everything properly, have your nutrition on point, and still make no progress because your mindset is not right. And this is why I personally, and you'll see that this video is full of analogies, I compare the novice stage to paradise and the intermediate stage as purgatory, meaning that you can escape purgatory, but it's not going to be easy. Now you have to put in effort. And so if you refuse to put in that effort or you don't put it in the correct way, you will be stuck there forever. And this is why we have such a thing as forever intermediates. What is a forever intermediate? It's someone who is lifting, who is putting in effort, but who is not progressing. Usually someone who doesn't really look like they lift, they're in between. You can tell they have some muscle, but no one is going to be impressed by it. And it seems like everything that they do is getting them absolutely nowhere. They are stuck in that purgatory. And there could be many reasons for that fate. There could be many reasons that turn you into a forever intermediate. So I'm going to share them with you, but you'll see that they're all related to psychology and they're all self-inflicted. It's never genetics. It's never potential. It's never things outside of your control. It is you. And that's a great news because this means that if you fix your mindset, you will be able to become better. So the first issue and the first thing that will keep you stuck and trapped in this stage is the fact that you're spoiled. You are a spoiled brat. You just finished on that stage and you think that newbie gains are going to continue forever. But the truth of the matter is they will not. The problem is that you get used to it. And this is why I personally regard newbie gains as a curse. It actually is not a blessing. I think that it would be much more beneficial if your first year of gains was spread out within the first three years instead, because it would teach you patience. But because you get so much so fast, you get used to that treatment and to that pace in reality. And so when that stops occurring, it is a mindfuck. A mindfuck that means that you enter the intermediate phase with the wrong mindset. And if I were to compare it to everyday life, I would say that it's a bit like a child becoming an adult. When you are in your novice stage, you are a kid and then you graduate, you become an adult and that is your intermediate stage. But you will meet many people in your daily life that just do not seem able to make that transition. They're stuck in childhood. Why? Because childhood in truth is no personal responsibility. It is also a form of freedom, freedom from responsibility, and all of that can be very appealing. You do not want to get away from that state of existence. But at some point, if you want to grow, if you want to evolve as a person, you have to bite the bullet and you have to become an adult. Why do I say this? I say it because, just like with everyday life, you could become what I call a Peter Pan lifter. What is a Peter Pan lifter? It's someone who is constantly trying to relive their childhood. And how can you do that in lifting? Well, it's very simple. You stop training. You would be surprised the amount of people who get to the intermediate stage and then just quit. And they quit for six months to a year and then they start again. And they start again as novices because they've regressed. So now their newbie gains start again. Many people think their newbie gains is only once. No, your newbie gains kick in whenever the body hasn't been trained for a long time or never trained at all. So in reality, you could relive your newbie gains forever but you're not going anywhere. Your squat will go from 150 to 300 pounds, then you'll regress back to 150, and then you'll do that again, but faster because of the ability of your muscles to remember the work you put in. But that won't get you anywhere because at the end of the day, you're just doing the same journey times and times again. You do not want to become that person, be it in the gym or in everyday life. And once you've outgrown that mindset, once you've realized that childhood is over and it's time to be an adult, now is also time to shift your perspective. 
As a novice, you or someone who didn't know how to drive properly put in a very fast car. That car was so fast that even though your ability to drive was subpar, it didn't really matter, you still zoomed by. And on top of that, it didn't require much fuel, so it was very easy to keep going super fast. But eventually, that car transforms. You're not staying in that Ferrari forever. And many people simply cannot deal with that. Many people are so used to that speed that when it gets cut in half, they take it as a personal slight against themselves because they are spoiled. They cannot integrate the idea that this is perfectly normal. Your gains are going to slow down and there is nothing you can do about that. But the good news is that if you just kept driving, you would keep progressing. But if you keep comparing your current speed to your previous pace, chances are that you'll simply get discouraged and you'll quit. And this is extremely visible, especially in YouTube comments. Because as a content creator and someone who is in contact with many people who are past the intermediate stage, we see that mindset all the time. People who don't quite seem to understand why our progress is so slow. Because their progress is extremely fast. But they fail to realize that this is because we are at different parts of our journey. I'm not even riding a car anymore. I'm riding a bike. And yes, it's very, very slow up that hill. But guess what? I'm not getting off the bike. I'm going to keep biking. The issue is that if you take that spoiled mindset with you into these more advanced stages, I can guarantee you that you will not be riding the bike. If the car is not fast enough, or again, God forbid, if you have to give up the car entirely and start biking, you will simply not be able to cope with that reality and you'll quit. And that, in truth, is the reason why you will be stuck as an intermediate forever. This is the reason why you'll never get an exceptional physique. It's not because the car is slower. It's because you refuse to drive it because it's not going fast enough for your taste. And I know that all of this might sound very discouraging to some of you guys because I'm essentially telling you that at some point, yes, your gains will become slow. But the key is this. They will never stop. So as long as your perspective is shifted, you'll be fine. I want to make this clear because you'll meet many people who will tell you that most of your gains and most of your mass is built in the first three to five years. And that's true. For most of your mass, that is absolutely true. But the issue is that they'll then go on to present the rest of the mass you could be getting if you kept going as negligible. And this is the part that is absolutely abhorrent because this is the reason why people do not get exceptional physiques. Take my example. In my first five years of lifting, from 15 to 20, I went from 110 to 170. So that's 60 pounds of gains in five years. And in the following five years, from 20 to 25, I went from 170 to 200 pounds. In there, I also had a point where I peaked at 240, but I was fat. So if we're talking about actual muscle gains, 170 to 200 pounds. Now that's 30 pounds in five years. And then in the three years that followed that, from 25 to 28, I went from 200 pounds to 215. So this time, 15 pounds in three years. So if you run the math, you'll realize that in my case, my gains were literally divided by two every five years. And some people might look at this and say, well, that is the proof that diminished returns are a bitch and there is no point in continuing. And to that I say, nonsense, because the pounds that I've been gaining recently are the ones that matter for a very simple reason. Anyone can gain those first 50 pounds. So everyone is going to get to that level. Everyone is going to get to that advanced novice stage. But the amount of work you put in afterwards that gets you these extra remaining gains, that is what is going to make you stand out from the crowd. And I can tell you that every single advanced lifter on this platform can vouch for what I'm going to say. Even though technically, if you look at percentages, these remaining 10 to 15 pounds are not that important. If you look at the big picture, in reality, they are the most important because they're what finishes the statue. It's the cherry on top of the cake. It is what makes or breaks your physique. And again, that's simple math. 
If we look at the total percent of the lifting population, how many people, how much of a percentage do we have of lifters who get to 160? It's a big percent. Then 170, then 180, 190, 200, 210, 220. You understand that for each five pounds increment, the percentage of people who can showcase that physique lean is becoming smaller and smaller. So for each five pounds you can put on, even if it takes you two years, you are reaching a brand new level. And this is why I say that stages of your lifting journey are like filters. The people that can't make it through get fucking filtered. And at the end, the 1% remains. Is this the 1% of most genetically gifted? No, it's the 1% that understands what I just told you, that understands that it's all about that mindset. It's all about riding that bike. And this is why the term diminishing returns always makes me laugh. Because it clearly comes from people who are spoiled and who thought that they could just put in the same amount of effort and get the same results back. But since your body is becoming bigger, it's perfectly normal that you would have to be more patient and put in more work to get extra results on top of what you already have. So when people use that term negatively, they're entirely in the wrong. It's not negative. It's perfectly neutral. It's just describing the reality of your situation. And keep in mind one thing. We're talking about the intermediate stage here. So we should not even be using the term diminishing returns because it's comparing the gains you'll get as an intermediate as opposed to a novice. But when you're a novice, there's not even an investment to put in. Everything comes easy. So in truth, the intermediate pace of gains is the normal pace. It is the standard and the baseline. Do not compare the gains you're making to the newbie phase. Your newbie phase is six months. You'll be lifting for 15 years. Of course, you'll be very unhappy with your results if your baseline and your standard to look at your rate of progression is the time during your journey where you were the fastest. This is something you must banish from your brain. And also something else to keep in mind. Even if you get to a point where, let's say there's barely 20% of gains to be scrooged from all of your efforts, since when do we scoff at 20%? If I came to your office or to your job and I told you, hey, I'm going to cut your salary down by 20%, you'd be mad as fuck. That's a lot of money. Likewise, if I told you, hey, I'm going to cut down your life expectancy by 20%, I don't think this would be a fiesta. I think you'd be extremely upset. But for some reason, when it comes to lifting, people scoff at these 20%. It's like, oh, 20%. 20% gains is the difference between someone who looks average and someone who looks like a Greek god. Take 20% of Steve Reeves' gains and he looks like a random Joe. So never look down on these 20% because these are the 20% that matter. And you'll also notice that usually the people who, again, regard these 20% as useless or a poor time investment are also the type of people who do not have these 20%. So as a rule of thumb, never take advice from dudes who are not riding anymore, who are on the side of the road and who are pointing the finger and saying, oh, look at this guy, he's not going very fast. Well, yeah, maybe that person is not going, not going very fast, but the person who is judging from the side of the road is not moving at all. And this is why I insist that you must get your mindset right. If the car is not running, even if I give excellent driving advice, it's not running. So it's not going to help you at all. This is key because there's a ton of channels out there who give excellent advice that applies to intermediates and advanced people. But because so many are stuck in that loop of negative reinforcement, they will never be able to make use of it. It's like if I handed you a shovel and you tried to use it to eat your yogurt. A shovel is not a spoon. It's your perspective and your inability to shift your mindset regarding the object I'm handing you that makes the object unusable and not the object itself. And now that this has been said and the most important part of the video is done with, let's start with practical advice. In reality, if everything I said previously has imprinted itself upon your brain, you're good. You don't even really need to watch the rest of the video. But for some of you guys who want clear tactical lifting advice, here goes. 
So the first thing to do when you become an intermediate is to realize that the method that worked in the past might no longer work. I know it looks weird to say because it should be obvious, but you would be surprised the amount of people who are knee deep in cognitive dis dissonance and who are clinging to things that don't work because they're emotionally attached to it. We have a tendency to do that. We tend to get attached to the first influencer we discovered, to the first program we ran. All of that is hogwash. Push that away. You don't need that. You will most likely need to revisit and reinvent your progression scheme and program if you want to keep progressing. Because as I said, since you've become a new lifter, the methods that you will apply to your journey must become new as well. And this means that relying on one progression scheme can no longer be possible. For example, if you were used to just use weight on the bar as a mean to progressively overload, this will not do. I guarantee you that this is the reason why you will not progress anymore. It is time to take a look at variables such as volume, frequency, and intensity. Once you take these into account and you use them to modulate your training, you will find that it will be much easier to progress because you will have more tools in your toolbox. Again, as a novice, as a child, you had a hammer and you would hammer into the wall until it broke and it worked because the wall was made of cardboard. But now the wall is made of iron and you can no longer break it down with the hammer. Now you have to create a route up the wall that you can then climb to access the next stage. So you have to become smart. Dumb methods will no longer work. And speaking about dumb, there's also something else that must be taken into account and dismissed as a poor method of progression. Many people get by with done of his gains by doing as little as possible. And that is excellent. I promote that. But then they become intermediates. They take a new program and the program bombards them with volume that they then justify by saying, oh, since I am now an intermediate, I must do much, much more. But that's a problem. Just because you're now an intermediate does not mean that you're suddenly a completely different beast. Your mindset must change. But your ability to handle volume and your work capacity, it's still the same as it was on your novice program. So if you double or even triple, like I've seen, your volume out of the novice stage thinking, oh, well, volume is best for hypertrophy, the only thing you'll get is a burnout because all of that volume you'll do will be junk volume for the most part and it will tire the fuck out of you. There's really no reason to do that. Instead, you want to bump up your workload bit by bit for each body part with two or four sets. When you add a new exercise, when you add volume, two sets, that is already plenty. And then you can add from there. Always remember, we don't just do extra volume for the sake of it. We do it to push progression. If you can progress with weight on the bar and tonnage, with your current volume, there is no reason to do more volume. That way you give yourself space. Keep in mind again that you are at the start of your journey. You will be an intermediate for years and that is perfectly normal. And then you will be an advanced lifter for years and in reality for the rest of your life. So do not rush the journey because rushing the journey is the best way to crash the car and to be left stranded. Also, this is the time for you to start training muscle groups that you have been neglecting. Abs, neck, calves, all of these things must now be targeted via isolation. And if you've been running a minimalistic program, there's even a chance that you neglected isolation altogether. In which case, congratulations, you will get a new batch of newbie gains because you will start hitting muscles that have never been hit directly. So you will see extremely, extremely fast growth. That's also one of the lessons of this video. Again, being an intermediate is just a name we give to a stage, but it's arbitrary. You'll find that parts of your body are still novices. So this also means that progress will occur forever as long as your methods are proper. However, even though I believe that rejecting minimalism is extremely important to not get stuck in the intermediate purgatory, this does not mean that we reject the basics. It's always the same with people, the pendulum swings left or right, but it always goes to an extreme. So you have those who stick 
with their compound movement only program and then they wonder why they never get a good physique or why they're stuck in the, in, in the intermediate stage. And then you have those who just ditch compounds altogether thinking, oh, that's old news. That's what I did when I was a novice. Well, if it worked for you when you were a novice, guess what? It will still work for you as an intermediate. You just have to tweak the mechanisms of the program to make sure that the compounds adapt to it. So look at the lifts that you love the most and got you the most results on your novice program and use these of, as the pillars of your new program. If you try to do something like brand new with nothing that you're used to, it'll be extremely exciting, yes, but you'll also feel lost and this will heighten the chance of you getting burnt out. So try to get some of that familiarity from your novice stage and take it with you into the intermediate. Also, do not fall for the appeal of every shiny new lift or gimmick. Childhood and the novice stage must be more restrictive by definition because kids need structure. So your program must be more restrictive. As an intermediate, I believe that you gain more freedom and that freedom is necessary because it also gives you room to fail and to experiment with your own body and your own program. But the issue is that this also makes you a prime target for people who run gimmicks on YouTube and Instagram who have all of these crazy new lifts they invented that you'll want to try and that at the end of the day will just make you waste time. You're going to spin your wheels forever chasing this shiny new invention when in reality you should have stuck to the basics of things that are time tested and proven to work. And this of course also applies to program hopping because what you're really trying to do when you switch programs all the time is you're trying to relieve your childhood. You're trying to relieve your newbie and your novice phase. Since when you pick up a new program, even if you're very advanced, you get very fast PRs at the start because you are getting adapted to the movement. These are brand new and so you gain strength extremely, extremely fast. The issue is that this, not, this does not result in most gains. The only thing again you're doing is you're clinging to the excitement. I know it's sad, but the intermediate and advanced stage are slightly less exciting because nothing can compare to the excitement of your newbie games. But guess what? You can still have a ton of fun in the gym. And if anything, I'm much more happy in the gym as an advanced lifter as opposed to when I was a noob because now I have the knowledge to apply freedom in a manner that gets me content and gets me gains. You will, however, never get there if you program hop. And it's important that I say this because I make a shit ton of programs and times and times again, I see people in my comments saying, oh, I've been running your previous program for three months. Should I jump on this one? And the answer is always no. If the previous one worked, why would you jump on this one? You're just going to put gains on the table that will never be recovered. Do not change a winning team. Only switch programs if necessary for progression. Please keep that in mind. That is incredibly important. And the same goes for variations. Do not be the person that takes a lift out of that program and replaces it with something else because you stalled. You stalled. It's the sign that now the lift is difficult. This is when the body must adapt and put on muscle. If you swap it out for a new lift, you're going to sure gain a ton of strength. But guess what? This is neurological adaptation. These are not muscular gains. Do not fall for the trap of instantaneous gratification and excitement. And in the same vein, understand that plateaus are normal at this stage. I swear to God, this attempt or tendency to chase PRs all the time is also the reason why people don't make any progress. It's because you cannot always PR. It's not possible at some point. Your ability to add weight on the bar every single session becomes greatly reduced. So your ability to hit PR every single time is unrealistic and that is perfectly normal. At this point in your lifting journey, you will be retaking the same weight for several sessions. And that is fine because this means that the weight you're using is challenging to the muscle. So as long as some progress occurs, you are fine. And this is why I say that this is the time to apply more advanced progressive overload strategies like evolving rep ranges. With evolving rep ranges, you'll always get a rep PR. Always. Not always a weight PR, 
but your rep PRs will build up into a weight PR. And that is how progression works at this stage. Forget about 10 pounds jumps. That is not going to occur anymore unless you try a new lift. Instead, your objective now is to get reps PRs. Will this take longer than adding tons of weight on the bar at once? Of course it will, but guess what? Down the line, this is how you get advanced. It's small incremental progression here and there. Naturally, this means that you're going to have to be patient and you'll have to realize that the intermediate stage and the advanced stage is a game of patience. But every single natural leaf that you look up to on this platform, this is exactly how they did it. Sustain effort for a very long time always beats very short paced, intense bursts of effort because the second is not sustainable, but the first is. And if you're applying that progress methodology in your program, I guarantee you that you will keep seeing muscular development. It will not be fast paced, but when you add up the years at the end, this is what is going to create a beautiful statue. And talking about statue, this is also the point of your journey where you should start to ask yourself what you want your statue to look like. You could even be realizing that you care about strength more than aesthetics, and that is perfectly fine, but you better have an answer. Again, it's like childhood. Being a kid, you are full of potential, and it's fine if you don't know where you want to go. But when you're 25 or 30 and you still don't know what you want to do with your life, that is not cute anymore because now, most likely, any amount of effort that you're going to put forward in life is going to be wasted. It's the same in the gym. Ask yourself this question, what do I want? And if I want aesthetics, what do I want to look like? What is my dream body? Knowing where you want to go with your training will make creating a path and an itinerary much easier. Which is again, not something that is needed when you're a novice, because when you are a novice, you're being literally carried by noob gains. In reality, I should not even have compared the novice stage with a fast car. You're not even in a car, you're in a train, you're not even driving, you don't know where you go, but that's okay. Now that you are behind the wheel, however, you better know where you are going, because when that flow of instant PRs and instant gains dies down, if you have no why to cling on to and no reason to train on a direction, you'll find out that being able to stick to a how, meaning a training program, is almost impossible. And that is going to conclude this video. So as you see, there is no magic formula. There is no secret that is going to save you from the intermediate stage because you should not want to be saved from it. You should savor every single moment. Lifting is a privilege. Sure, it's going slightly slower than your newbie games, but so the fuck what? You should love lifting. The fact that you get to spend more time in the gym and to do the thing that you love for longer should be a motive of rejoicement for you. If it is not the case, you have to ask yourself if this lifting game is really for you. Because always keep in mind one thing. The difference between an intermediate and an advanced lifter is two things. One, the advanced lifter has been lifting for longer, and two, the advanced lifter decided to keep going. The difference between the you that is going to be stuck as a forever intermediate and the you that is going to become an advanced lifter with an exceptional physique is this. One version of you will have made the decision to keep driving and the other will have quit. And this is why I insisted so much on the mindset and why the power of the mind at this point is paramount. You do not bodybuild with only your body. Your brain is a weapon. Learn how to use it. And if you need pointers, check, check out the description. I made a full video about the power of imagination. And I know that for some people, they look at it and they are a bit, in a sense, skeptical. But I can tell you this. Every single natural lifter I know on this platform who is very advanced, they all agree that at some point, the brain becomes more important than the body when it comes to bodybuilding. And I'm going to leave you with that. If you enjoyed this video, if the advice was helpful to you, you can support the channel by clicking the first link in the description. It is my coffee page. You can donate, you can pledge a membership. 
everything is greatly appreciated because this is what allows me to keep running this channel and keep putting out videos for you guys. Thank you for your support. Thank you for watching and have a good night.